absolutely the sequester compromised air safety. Think about it in these terms. Everything in aviation safety is based on redundancy. Redundancy of equipment and redundancy of personnel. Equipment backs up equipment and personnel backs up personnel. You never see any less than two crew members on a commercial flight deck. So when we're talking about a 10% reduction in FAA staffing levels, like we saw during the period of the sequester, we're talking about one less individual being in place to monitor the ATC system. In other words, one less individual to potentially catch a mistake. Remember, the number one cause of aviation accidents is human error. I think frequent travelers know that delays have become the norm in air travel, unfortunately, but for a variety of reasons. Weather, a big player in delays day in and day out. Major weather systems on the map like snowstorms in the winter, thunderstorms in the springtime and summer season, all cause air traffic controllers to reroute traffic around these big weather systems during the uh, event. And volume, another major culprit on ATC radar screens, traffic converging in the same geographical spot at the same time. Take New York metropolitan areas like Newark, LaGuardia, and Kennedy's airports, combined with smaller but equally busy fields in the same region, Teterboro and Westchester, all of this traffic converging in the same geographical area causes a bottleneck in the sky. Now, that causes delays day in and day out and a major headache for travelers. But the type of delays that we saw during the sequester period were a little bit different. We saw delays ranging from 90 minutes to three hours, stretching from the first flight of the day, the kickoff flights before sunrise, into the last flight touchdown. And that is a bit unusual. Well, should they have occurred? That is the million dollar question. We can say this, 10% of the FAA staffing levels were affected. We know that much. We know that one individual at the FAA at any given location was forced not to come to work every other pay period or every other week. But the effects of those furloughs were staggered, if you will, to offset the effects and offset potential delays. What we know is this as well. An FAA source very familiar with air traffic control operations tells me that air traffic controllers are prohibited from slowing down traffic. It would be seen as an illegal job action. But our source goes on to say that if they demonstrated that they could handle the traffic management at reduced staffing levels, then they would never get the staffing levels back to where they should be, to where they were pre-sequester. So essentially, they would never get those staffing levels back to where they feel they should be for the traveling public. And with the politics and economics at play today, that's hardly a point to argue. Absolutely. When I was on the line flying, at a time when the air traffic controllers were negotiating contracts, we saw similar delays system-wide. Mysteriously, those delays disappeared when their contracts were signed. And that was way before any government sequestration. Well, infrastructure comes to mind. Infrastructure that meets the eye. Take, for example, LaGuardia Air Airport. Some refer to it jokingly as La Garbage. In any case, a busy airport like that, one of the busiest in the nation, has a structural comparable to what you might find in a third world nation. But it's not only the infrastructure that meets the eye, it's the infrastructure behind the scenes. The modernization or lack of modernization in the air traffic control system itself. Many of our neighbors in Europe and Southeast Asia have invested a lot of money in technology. And this lack of technology still rooted within our ATC system slows us down causes less direct routing and more general system-wide delays.